Can you describe your experience with Drupal and the types of projects you have worked on? Sure, I've been working with Drupal for over five years, mainly versions 8, 9, and now 10. My projects have included large-scale e-commerce sites, government portals, and internal platforms for NGOs. I've handled everything from theming and back-end module development to site migrations and deployment pipelines. How do you approach the process of deming in Drupal? Can you provide an example of a challenging deming project? I usually start with a sub-theme based on Olivero or Classy, then use Twig templates and pre-process functions to keep markup clean. One particularly challenging project was an e-commerce platform with unique UI elements. I had to create flexible components, adapt for dynamic content, and optimize performance at the same time. What are the key differences between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 ninths, and how have you adapted to these changes? The biggest shift was moving from procedural PHP to object-oriented programming with Symfony in Drupal 8 slash 9. I adapted by learning Symfony's service container and routing system and rewrote older custom modules to use modern patterns like dependency injection. How do you ensure the security of a Drupal site? Can you discuss any specific security measures you implement? I always keep core and contrib modules updated. I configure permissions strictly, use the security kit module, and avoid granting admin privileges lightly. I've also disabled PHP execution in the files directory and implemented two-factor authentication on admin logins when possible. Can you explain the concept of entities in Drupal and how they differ from nodes? Entities are structured data objects, nodes, users, taxonomy terms, etc. A node is a specific type of entity for content like articles or pages. I've also built custom entities when node types didn't fit the use case, like a review entity with its own fields and logic. Describe your experience with custom module development in Drupal. What was the most complex module you created? I've created many custom modules. Some simple, some quite complex. The most involved one integrated with an external LMS. It pulled data via REST, displayed user-specific reports, used cron jobs for syncing, and implemented custom caching strategies to maintain performance. How do you handle performance optimization in Drupal? What tools or techniques do you use? I rely on Drupal's built-in caching layers, render, page, and dynamic cache. I also aggregate JS slash CSS and integrate Redis for scalable caching. For deeper issues, I use Blackfire or New Relic to profile slow database queries and improve view efficiency. Can you discuss your experience with Drupal's Views module and how you have utilized it in your projects? Views is my go-to for building lists, feeds, or even admin dashboards. I often use contextual filters, exposed filters, and relationships to build complex displays. I've also extended views by adding custom field plugins and display handlers when the default options weren't enough. How do you manage and deploy configuration changes in a Drupal environment? I export config using Drush sex, commit it to Git, and import it on other environments with Drush CM. I use configuration split to manage environment-specific differences like dev modules or block placements. This keeps everything version controlled and predictable. What strategies do you use for debugging and troubleshooting issues in Drupal? In dev, I enable verbose error messages and use the devil module with Kint. For more serious issues, I debug with xdebug inside VS Code. I also regularly check Drupal's watchdog logs at slash admin reports DB log and use Drush to check routing and cache problems. Can you explain the role of Composer in managing Drupal dependencies? Composer is how I manage everything in modern Drupal. I use it to install core, contrib modules, patches, and even third-party libraries. It ensures consistent environments and makes onboarding and CI-CD much smoother. How do you approach user permissions and roles in Drupal to ensure proper access control? 
I always define clear user roles and only assign the minimum permissions needed. I avoid giving full admin rights unless absolutely necessary. I've also implemented content moderation workflows to give editors proper control without access to site-wide settings. Describe a time when you had to collaborate with a team on a Drupal project. What was your role and how did you contribute? On a multilingual government portal project, I handled backend development, setting up content models, custom blocks, and REST endpoints. I coordinated with the frontend and content teams, and we used GitLab for version control and Jira for sprints. Clear role ownership made collaboration smooth. How do you stay updated with the latest developments and best practices in the Drupal community? I follow Drupal.org, listen to Drupal Easy podcast, and join Drupal Slack channels. I also contribute to discussions on Stack Overflow and occasionally attend meetups or virtual conferences. Continuous learning is part of the job. Can you explain the concept of hooks in Drupal and provide an example of how you have used them? Hooks allow me to alter core or contrib behavior. I've used hook form alter to modify registration forms, adding custom validation or fields. They're great for quick logic tweaks without rewriting a module's code base. Can you explain the concept of hooks in Drupal and provide an example of how you have used them? I've worked with both the REST module and JSON API. For one project, I built a companion mobile app that pulled content using custom REST endpoints. I secured them with OAuth and added fields using custom REST plugins when needed. How do you approach content migration in Drupal? Can you share an example of a migration project you worked on? I use the Migrate and Migrate Plus modules. For one project, I migrated blog content from WordPress. I created a custom migration map, handled media separately, and used custom process plugins to transform source values before import. Describe your experience with Drupal's multilingual capabilities. How have you implemented multilingual sites? I've implemented multilingual features using core modules like language, content translation, and interface translation. I make sure views and blocks are translatable and configure URL-based language detection. For RTL languages, I use themes that handle direction and alignment properly. How do you prioritize tasks and manage your time when working on multiple Drupal projects? I use project boards like Jira or Trello to keep track of deliverables. I prioritize based on urgency, business impact, and dependencies. I also block out deep focus time to avoid constant task switching and keep stakeholders informed throughout the process. Can you discuss a challenging problem you faced while working with Drupal and how you resolved it? One site was crashing under high load. After checking logs, I realized that several views with exposed filters weren't cached. I added caching layers, enabled BigPipe, and moved static assets to a CDN. Performance improved instantly, and the site stabilized. How do you ensure that your Drupal sites are accessible to users with disabilities? I follow WCAG 2.1 guidelines, use semantic HTML, and add ARIA attributes where necessary. I test forms for keyboard accessibility and use tools like Axe, Wave, and screen readers to audit compliance. What tools do you use for version control in your Drupal projects, and why are they important? I use Git for everything feature branching, code reviews, and release tagging. It ensures traceability and allows teams to collaborate safely. I also use pre-commit hooks to check coding standards and prevent accidental secrets from being pushed. Can you explain the importance of testing in Drupal development and the types of tests you implement? I use Git for everything, feature branching, code reviews, and release tagging. It ensures traceability and allows teams to collaborate safely. I also use pre-commit hooks to check coding standards and prevent accidental secrets from being pushed. How do you handle client feedback and revisions during a Drupal project? I try to maintain an open feedback loop, weekly reviews, demo calls, and documented revision notes. I track requests in Jira or ClickUp and make sure we're aligned on what's a new feature versus a change in scope.
What do you believe are the most important soft skills for a Drupal developer, and how do you demonstrate them in your work? Clear communication, empathy and patience are big ones. I make an effort to explain things clearly to non-technical clients and collaborate well with team members. I also try to stay calm under pressure and bring a solutions first mindset to the table. Use these answers as a guide, but don't forget to shape them with your own stories and experience. The best interviews are the ones where you're not just answering questions, you're connecting with your interviewer.